Well, well COVID-19 live streaming of council meetings, due to occasions and the need to comply with social distancing measures, all council meetings will be held by video conference until further notice. Residents will not be able to attend meetings in person. Federation Council wishes to advise members of the public the council meetings will be live streamed so that the public may view the proceedings of the meeting in real time or later and will be available after each meeting on council's website via meetings via links federation council live stream acknowledgement of country i would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting today the bangarang people and acknowledge the aboriginal and torres strait islander people who now reside in this area. I extend that respect to Elders past and present of the Bangarang Nations. I'll now call for apologies or absence of leave by councillors. I haven't received any, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I'll now call for the confirmation, item, item number four, confirmation of minutes. Confirmation of minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 21st of April, 2020. Can I have a mover, please, councillors? Councillor Wales. Move, Councillor Wales, seconded by Councillor Longley. All in favour? Aye. Against? Yes, it works. Aye. Did it work? It works. Right. Number five, disclosures of interest. Uh, Mr Mayor, councillors, I have one disclosure of interest being a significant non-pecuniary interest in agenda item 8.6 being the community grants program uh, that's been lodged by our Director of Development and Environmental Services, uh, Susan Appleyard, uh, whose partner is the president of that uh, machinery club that's um, looking to get a grant. So that's been noted. Thank you. Would someone like to move that, please? Move moved by, by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. All in favour? Aye. <clears throat> Against? Carry. Thank you. Mayoral minute, there'd be no mayoral minute. Number, item number seven, general manager's report. July 220, ordinary council meeting, briefing session and council workshop. There's a recommendation there, councillors. First one, the council note the report on July 2020, ordinary meeting, briefing session and council workshop. Number two, the council, that the July ordinary council meeting be postponed from 21st of July 2020 and held on Tuesday the 28th 2020 via video conferencing commencing at 9am and three that the July councillor workshop be postponed also on the 21st from the 21st to the 28th and also be by video conferencing and point number four that the July briefing be postponed from the 30th of July 2020 to 20th of July 2020 by video conferencing. Would someone like to move that recommendation please councillors? Moved by Councillor Wales, seconded by Councillor Longley. All in favour? Aye. Questions? Aye. Against? Any against? If not, carried. Thank you. Uh, 7.2, September 2020, Ordinary Council Meeting Briefing Session and Councillor Workshop. There's a recommendation there, councillors. I won't read all the recommendations as you already have done that. Uh, would someone like to move that recommendation? Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Meagle. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Thank you. Item number 7.3, New South Wales State Government Financial Assistance Package for Local Councillors. Local Councils, rather. It would have been good for the councillors too. But uh, there's a recommendation there, councillors. Um, would someone like to move that recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Thomas. And seconded by Councillor Eagle. Is that, would that be okay? Thank you. Uh, questions or comments? I've got one there by Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Uh, this is to a general manager. If um, Adrian's available, Mr. Butler. Sure. <laughs> uh, I just in and around the commentary that how we've received on our business paper. Uh, I just would like to. I wasn't really sure whether when this is delivered, 
uh, with these financial packages, is there some, I'm going to use the word hierarchy, but I'd like to think there wasn't some, wasn't her hierarchy, but in their methodology on how this might come forward, like is there going to be a difference between, you know, our rural and regional councils and our metropolitan and urban councils when it comes to these financial packages? Uh, thanks, Councillor Thomas. Not that has been discussed and I wouldn't imagine that would be the case. The situation though is uh, it's, it's obviously fairly impacting on our regional rural councils. Um, there's a number of points to this report, but if I talked about the emergency services levy, that's, that's mm -hmm. a big one. We're um, being grateful the state government has come uh, towards providing a, a top up funding of, of the difference between the increase, but it's still a significant increase going forward and that definitely affects rural regional uh, councils more um, with our rural fire service and those other agencies um, that we have out in the region. So that's that's a prime example of one. Uh, the other concern we really do have is around um, any any of the um, lending assistance type criteria or even the job keeper um, benefits around people that have had to be put off um, you know, work. They're trying to the government's enforcing that you have to prove an overall drop in your overall operating uh, revenue, whereas councils are lobbying really hard and we may, hopefully we may win that battle, that we want to see um, that criteria or that formula be applied more down to the business unit. So if we've got caravan parks or which federation does have, um, if there's other particular business service units where we can uh, more easily prove that we've lost, you know, X amount of bookings. Um, so we don't really think it's fair that we have to, the whole industry doesn't think it's fair that we have to try and apply that on a, on a global scale in terms of our overall budget because we do obviously have a lot of guaranteed income from rates and um, mm. state and federal grants. So that's probably the two areas. But yeah, short answer is no, there's no set um, criteria to try and uh, leverage the rural councils um, you know, it, in, a, in a way that would allow a better share of it. Mm, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any, further, any further comments or questions there, councillors? Yes, Mr Mayor. Councillor Meagle. Thank you. Just in to the general manager in regards to um, the borrowings for the Moalis um, industrial estate, does does this qualify for the uh, lower rate as a part of this package or is that separate? Um, we've already made application to T-Corp. I haven't gone through the fine detail, so I can provide you with more information and um, follow up on that one, Councillor Meagle, to Council. But uh, my understanding is this also looks at those councils that weren't um, eligible to access T-Corp and they're bringing... So there must have been a range of councils that weren't uh, approved to use T-Corp. So whether that was a fit for future thing or something, I'm not sure of the detail, but it was sort of a, a broad blanket approach where they were outlining that every council could be part of the T-Corp thing, so, but I will follow up, sorry, on the, on whether this does change the interest rate or not. I'll get our director, Joe, to, to follow that up for you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions there, councillors? Um, if not, councillors, I just um, would make a comment that we've had great support um, from uh, local member Justin Clancy and also uh, to the point where the State Treasury made a phone call, um, you know, can well passing on their support and their thoughts for council um, after our motion went through from council. So I'd, I would like to uh, thank the state government for the support they've, they've given us. So would someone like to um, move that recommendation, please? Uh, I'm sorry, I'll put it. I'll now put it. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carry. Thank you. 7.4, meeting day. That was just in case we had a public Neil. speaker, because they do, they are allowed to book in after the agenda's done and there is no public speakers. So that's the end of the GM reports. Well, thank thank you. you very much, Mr. General Manager. We'll now move to uh, item number eight, Director of Corporate and Community Services Report. 8.1, Statement of Bank Balances and Reconciliation as at 30th of April 220. There's a, a certificate of uh, reconciliation. Recommendation that that the report on statement of bank balances and reconciliation on the 30th of April be noted. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments, Councillors? Yes, Councillor Meagle. Yes, Mr Mayor. Uh, once again, the general fund is um, relatively low to expectations. 
and we've had um, a fair bit of information on I know the finance department are working very hard on this. I'm quite confident that uh, our director has her finger on the pulse of this situation because the last thing we would want is for the uh, finance heart to stop beating. So the and we expect that uh, things will return to a more healthy state in the coming months. So I look forward to seeing that faith justified. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Eagle. Any, any further questions for Councillor Longmire? Yeah, I support that uh, position. Uh, it's a bit like a farmer waiting for a wool check or a wheat check to come in. So uh, we hope in the very near future the uh, return of the money on, and the, and the in, in payments are uh, on track to where it's been predicted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Longmire. Uh, spot on. It's it's very much like that uh, wool check or that grain check coming in January. Thank you, Councillor Whitechurch. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, like to echo Councillor Legal and Councillor Longmire's words. Um, it was noted a couple of months ago in our report that it identified, I think at the time by Councillor Meagle, that uh, the balance had been declining. Uh, the, the clarity that was put through by our director, Ms Shannon, was um, certainly very welcome to see that, uh, that, as we like to say now, the wool check was on its way. So I'd just like to um, congratulate the staff for clarifying where we were going. And, and it just goes to show that the budgeted uh, cash flow is, is somewhere pretty close to what we expected and in fact is going to return to a, a better position than first envisaged. So well done to all. Thank you, Councillor Whitechurch. Any further comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Thank you. Item 8.2, Schedule of Investments as at 30th of April 220. There's a recommendation there, Council. Would someone like to move that for me, please? Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Longmire. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Thank you. Item 8.3, Unreasonable Complaint Conduct Policy. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Against? Carried. Items 8.4, Federation Council Tourism Branding. How exciting. Uh, this has been a great project and uh, congratulations to the staff. Can I have a mover for that recommendation, please, councillors? Moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Longley. Is that right? Pardon? Oh, okay, you're uh, right. Yeah. No. no. Councillor Law. Councillor Law, thank you. Moved yeah, by all right. <laughs> Councillor Law, Church, and seconded by Councillor Law. Um, questions or comments, councillors? Councillor Law, did you have a comment? Councillor Whitechurch. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, you see these uh, brandings and these tourism initiatives come through from time to time, from year to year, and. I guess you often wonder whether they're going to be pursued and, and what benefit they are to the, the whole of the Federation Shire. But I think uh, as a council, we've made an enormous decision to really make this our branding and be known for being north of the Murray and, and the following up uh, programs and, and advertising campaigns that I'm sure are going to follow are really going to be something that people are going to be talking about. And, and I commend everybody that's been involved. But, as I said before, we're still going to make sure that we do push it. And if that's what we're going to do, we're going to stick to our guns and, and make it work. Yeah. Absolutely, Council Whitechurch. Council Wales, did you have a comment? He's muted. Mr. Mayor? Uh, uh, Councillor, I'm sorry, Councillor Meagle. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, the formation of Federation Council, and the we recognise that tourism is vitally important to this region and to our council in terms of economic development. So it makes sense to have a branding that can attract tourism because it's a very competitive market with everybody fighting for the same tourism dollar. So I would really commend the work that's been done to bring the new council together, not just the former Cairo Shire, but now uh, the Federation Council 
and uh, one brand that can um, benefit the entire LGA region. I think this is very important. We have a platform now, and it's really something, as Councillor Whitehead said, to go forward with and to um, promote as much as we can to make sure that uh, we're attracting the tourism dollar to our council. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Meagle. Councillor Thomas. I just would like to take this opportunity to suggest or make a suggestion. As the restrictions are listed, uh, you know, we're sit currently sitting within those, but as we come out of these restrictions, would there be opportunity, considering that the uh, Australian government are thinking about creating a bubble link between Australia and New Zealand, what a great opportunity to push our brand out across into New Zealand and maybe with a fellow LGA, if we could find a fellow LGA in New Zealand and have some form of relationship with maybe possibly our branding going over to them and great opportunities to create that linkage. Just a suggestion. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Great idea. <laughs> a great idea. Anything um, anything like that, councillors? Was there any further questions, uh, councillors? Councillor Longmire. Thank you, Mr Mayor. If anybody noticed on uh, national television uh, this morning, again, on the weather and weather opportunity of presentation, uh, the presenters going all around Australia uh, in alphabetical order. The one this morning was Mildura, um, but uh, they landed a opportunity because of their proactiveness to really get up and not just send um, still shots of what they've got to offer, but a video link in the whole process of a professional short uh, presentation, and I think um, with our north of the Murray, it's been suggested that uh, we create a brand with a, uh, a lyric and do it pro properly and professionally. And so, uh, in the opportunity coming forward with all sorts of things um, that we're developing, um, the oh, the real test will be if people in within the uh, 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 Australia come forward and want to tour. And, and go on holidays locally within the country, not overseas, which is everybody's talking about it on national television. So I think it's a real opportunity to get that brand out there and get it on its way. Councillor Longmire, did you have any examples, any examples of the lyric on you now or can you uh, express anything? With your permission, Mr Mayor, if, it, if it's accepting of the opportunity, um, if you'd like me to, um, I certainly uh, can give a rendition if that's okay. Okay. Absolutely. Just while those lyrics are being arranged, I was uh, also watching that that the presentation this morning in Mildura, and they used Rick Kelly, one of the the uh, one of the touring car drivers, pretty well known Holden driver, Rick Kelly, and his brother Todd. So I know Councillor Whitechurch has talked before about using our local champions. We've got a range of champions that are well known across Australia and the world in in sport and whether it's shooting and football and golf and the whole host. So I think uh, through Jo and down through her team, there were some really good opportunities come forward to, to market our, our destination, our region, our brand, uh, and using those community champions because the growth in inland tourism that we know of with the ads and all that are coming out, uh, overseas travel, probably not likely till 2023. I think it's a really exciting time to, to make sure we can be pretty aggressive in our destination marketing. Thank you. Uh, any further comments, sir, councillors, while we're waiting for Council Longmire? Mr. Mayor, uh, Council Whitechurch. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with our general manager there, and I have I have been banging that drum for a bit. We've got a, lo a lot of local champions. We've also got a lot of people that come to this area that are here on holidays year in year out. Um, you know, I'm sure that it's their holiday destination. They'd be more than happy to put their their face to a a bit of a jingle or something and i think the social media is where it's going to explode um, and yeah let's get part of it and make it happen yeah and no, i um if i could just make a comment while we're waiting on a bit of background there um it when you look at um how federation councils unfolded council meagle made a comment about how it's come together and i couldn't agree more with that it's quite exciting when you look at that that, that journey of What's happened, we've formed a new council, we've been given money by the state government 
to we've been given a very unique opportunity as councillors, one in a lifetime, to make a difference. We've put new assets on the ground. At, at times, I granted with general fund creates a bit of nervousness, but there's reasons for that. We have uh, coming out of this COVID, we have got the opportunity to, and I think um, not a, an opportunity to have to do is to push our tourism as hard as we possibly can. Ballpark, even in its current existence, uh, all our attractions, because um, I just see a, time, a refreshing time where we've had, uh, there's water in our soil, uh, the um, farming sector's had a great start. I think it, it's exciting times and it's great to have this platform to go forward with. Councillor Longwhite. In finishing, uh, Councillor Longmore, how are we going there? Oh, we just lost the um, lost the sound there for a minute. Are you there with us, Councillor Longmore? Oh, I don't think. I think his microphone's off. Oh, your microphone's off, Councillor Longmore. Your microphone's off. You better lip read him, I think. <laughs> it's Council overloaded, I think, Mr. Mayor. Overloaded. Oh, no worries. We'll come back to that later then. If um, if someone would like to put that recommendation, we'll put it all in favour. I lost it. Whatever it was. Against? Holy smoke, what's that? Uh, carried. Thank you, councillors. Mr Mayor, I could. So, Council Whitechurch. I just got a text message uh, to say the online streaming wasn't working to the public. Is that, can we just check that? Okay. Um, Simon, you might, would you be able to take care of that? Yeah, sorry, I've um, had some hardware failure and the stream is back online right now. Oh, thank you, Simon. Thank you. Probably a good thing the song didn't play. Yeah. Until later. Lucky, they would have, they would have missed out on that, um, that music, Councillor. Long line. Uh, 8.5 federal government drought funding. Round two, uh, confirmation and budget endorsement. There's some great news there. So there's a recommendation there, councils. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. I have a question. I have a question. I had a okay. question. But before I move on, Councillor Thomas, sorry, I didn't see you there. That's okay. It's all fine. Uh, I just uh, the timing is 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 become really uh, crucial because I've had some feedback from some of the uh, recipients for the second half of the year, the second round, and they actually think it's really exciting to move on with these projects. In terms of yes, we've had some really timely rainfall, but in terms of engaging, you know, local businesses to deliver on these projects. They just wanted to know how far away they could start engaging, you know, like the plumber, the electrician, et cetera, et cetera, to actually carry out some of these projects. So in terms of economic, um, you know, benefit back to our um, tradespeople, et cetera, and even our communities, it actually is giving light at the end of the tunnel. So thank you very much. I just thought the other point of call, would there be opportunity uh, to progress in this space and maybe timely for the June meeting for our drought support officer and our key engagement staff to bring together a, um, a summary of thus far for the delivery of the first half of the year with the drought funding. And also we have talked in chamber, last time we met in chamber, which might've been our March meeting, <laughs> that we really want to learn, you know, our lessons learned from this progress. And if we can pull together some thought processes around that would be brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. I'll ask uh, our general manager to make comment. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Thomas. I think that's a great idea. Joe, uh, our director of corporate, will no doubt liaise with Jared and, and down through Peter, who's run that uh, projects to, I think, yeah, give a good wrap up of the round one and where they've all got to. And yeah, certainly, we've had a, I've had a bit of contact as well from some groups that are keen on some of those round two projects to know uh, when they can get going. So I've seen some volunteer efforts and things across the community getting ready for the for the contractor for some of those projects so um yeah and, and then aware too from here lessons learned i think it'd be quite valuable if not that we want another drought but certainly uh, it applies to a lot of our 
our programs, how we consult. Thank you. Uh, I did notice, um, Councillor Thomas, that uh, Rennie was very lit up last night. You could see from your runner. So it looks like that first round project's gone ahead fairly well. Okay, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Thank you. 8.6, Community Grants Program, round two. Another great program. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Would someone like to move that recommendation? Whitechurch. Moved by Council Whitechurch, seconded by Council Kennedy. Any questions or comments, councillors? Mr. Mayor, yeah, sorry, I uh, couldn't get your attention. I'd like to move the recommendation with an amendment, uh, and that being that the Chamber of Commerce be included, and I'm happy to speak to that if need be. Yeah, included into the round. Into the, uh, but I'm happy to speak to it before the uh, motion, if you like. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Councillor Watchers. Uh, I did speak uh, to our, our staff regarding that that uh, last round of grants. I think there was you know, almost thirty thousand that hasn't been used up. I realise that the policy states that a late application can't be accepted, um, but although my understanding is that council could make a decision on it, the reason I'd like to include that um, grant application in there, and I believe it was compliant is because the events committee and the Chamber of Commerce work hand in hand. And that grant that they're, that they're applying for is to buy road traffic signs so that they can do all the traffic plans and everything required for the street party that they put on at Christmas time and the Easter billy cart races. So um, given that there's probably not gonna be another opportunity for those signs to be purchased uh, by a grant before, between now and Christmas, uh, I'd like to see it included on that basis as a one-off. I yeah. second Councillor Whitechurch's amendment. Or if it well, may be yeah. in order that if Councillor Kennedy agreed that, that... That we may make an extra point. Yeah, the one on the table where the motion already may not need the amendment if if you agree to vary that as you move in it. Depending on council, how Council feels. Um, I, agree. I agree to amend that. I actually sit on this committee with... Um, with Councillor Longley and, and Wales, and um, the actual th their thing wasn't presented to us, but um, because it was late. But I'm, I'm happy to amend that and get that included in 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 this um in this round of grants. Instead of amendment, are you happy to make point three carry this point three, Can Councillor Kennedy? Yeah, I'm happy with that. So just to clarify, uh, Joe Director Joe's on the line. Um, she may comment on this one. My view would be to tidy up that report. We'd just add the 3,000, um, which was recommended not to be awarded, the last um, row there on your on your table in the report. We'd add the, the Cora Business Chamber, $3,000 uh, for the purchase, as Councillor Whitechurch has said, was the event road safety signage. Um, so the total down the bottom for Rochelle would be 12,864, and then they'd reallocate 27,000 of unspent funding across to that summer event series. Is that your view, uh, Director Shannon? Uh, yes, it is, General Manager. I'd support that change. Mr. Mayor, so, that's okay. Thank you, Joe. Um, Councillor Longmore, you had your hand up. And yeah, permission to speak, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Um, yes. Can I ask a question in regard to the closure of the next round of opportunities for? for this community grants program. When would that uh, next round um, close? I'll refer that to Director Shannon. Director uh, Shannon, we, would you have a... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we haven't finalised dates of the next round, uh, but uh, when we do uh, propose those dates, we will bring that back to council so that you're aware of when the next round will open and will close. Question in regard to that, is there any indication, uh, Ms Shannon, in regard to it, will it be before Christmas and Easter next year? Uh, uh, yes, yes, it will be, um, down for long mile. We, we run the two rounds, um, one in the first half of the year and one in the second uh, half of the year. So uh, we will be running another program before Christmas. Yeah, uh, in my position at this point in time is to vote against you. Um, I support the recommendation in regard to we've made a policy, we're making, we're changing this on the run and I don't believe it's fair to the other organisations that have got their act together and put it together uh, and so with that accountability I'm against the amendment. 
because okay. I believe that the next opportunity will be for the Christmas uh, street parade. And I believe under normal circumstances, the opportunity for not the next round will be able to be uh, done through the process of what our policy says. Um, and they will still be able to have those signs for the Christmas party and Easter next year. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's a vote against the motion. The motion has changed to uh, with that point three in it. Uh, any further uh, questions or comments there, uh, Councillor? Councillor Meagles. When, when Council the point, Mr. Meagles. Councillor Meagles. Yeah, Councillor Meagles, would you like to make a comment? Yes, you... we're in the um, mode of amendments and adjustments. I'd like to move that uh, point two, which uh, states that the funds be used for a series of events over the summer rather than um, spend those could we not just carry them forward to further community um, grants so that it would be disappointing if we have a heap of projects come forward in next year's allocation and we can't meet them all whereas we've got carryover funds here and it seems logical to me to carry those forward so that they're um, or at least part of uh, half of that amount to carry forward for uh, community projects for the coming year once we get past this uh, COVID-19 restrictions, there may be a whole heap of other projects that uh, the community wants to do. And uh, it would be nice if council had those funds uh, available for perhaps a more um, extensive list of projects next year. Thank you. So I'll, on that basis, Councillor Meagle, I'll ask Rochelle to type up if you want to go the way of an amendment. Just get some wording there, which could be uh, assuming you're still okay with the chamber's three thousand going in, and then point three, you'd want to change that to saying that council reallocate the twenty-seven thousand of unspent funding from nineteen twenty into twenty twenty-one, and then it's basically events or a whole other things can be considered in one as part of a bolstered up uh, budget for next year. Is that your that was my intention, Mr. Uh, General Manager. Thank you. So they need a second, I don't know. So we yeah, would need a second, yeah. Aaron, and if Rochelle, I don't know whether this allows it, the technology may not allow us to have a Word document up on the run, but anyway, if the councillors are comfortable with that. Well, I can second I, Yeah, we've so got second a second as councillor. So that's so the amendment. So there is amendment now. It's uh, moved by Council Mega, seconded by Council Law. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Any questions or comments? On that one. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'd uh, I'd like to uh, see that uh, as well. I think Councillor Meagles come up with a, a good idea there, is and taking it forward would certainly be a, a way to go. But I'd certainly like a right reply on the first amendment if I could let the time come. Yeah. Any further questions or comments, councillors? If not, uh, Council Whitechurch. Right. Oh, Council Wales. Sorry, we've got one there. I was a bit worried. I didn't think you could see me sign. Um, I support Council Whitechurch and being on the Grants Committee, I think um, it's a good idea to do the way we're going to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have a question. Councillor Thomas. Uh, I, I, I'm happy with the new um, uh, amendment to put forward. This my, um, my question or my comment is, can I do it after this goes forward because it's non-related? Or do you want me to do it now? Uh, no, you can ask, you can ask your question now. Yeah, okay. Well, it's unrelated, it's better to... I don't understand oh, that. Is, what did you mean? Sorry, Councillor Thomas. Oh, it's, it's, it's to do with our community grants program, but it's unrelated to our conversation that we're having at the minute. So when would you like me to, to make that comment? Probably better for the workshop or something. Oh, yes, okay. um, so... It's. Uh, I, 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 I oh yeah, no. Mention go ahead. Ask, ask the question, Councillor Thomas. Yeah. Okay. I just wondered, with our community grants program, would there be somewhere within the process of the um, the application progress to actually encourage those who are making the application? <laughs> where possible when they're requiring um, tradesmen, supplies and materials to actually really support our local businesses, if that could be written, just to give some feedback to the uh, staff members that are pulling this together, whether we could write that into that grant process at all. 
And I just would like to just reiterate how exciting it was to read such a diverse all allocation of funds this time around to, to a lot of um, different projects. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Councillor Thomas, and, and <coughs> I think that would be a very good move. Um, okay, so we've got the amendment. amendment. There's no need for a response here at the moment. We'll just take a vote on the amendment. Uh, the only uh, thing that I'd, if I could have one comment um, before we take the vote is that uh, I like, okay, I like the idea and it's, it's a worthy to get that um, extra grant in for the um, Chamber of Commerce for, for signage. Um, obviously been a problem for a long time. I just wonder, councillors and Council Meagle, if there was someone that was to come forward, and I don't know whether this was where Council Longmire was coming from, come forward with a similar situation before Christmas, um, if the fact is if we're going to carry it all over after Christmas, if that would cut them off. Um, now, can I just clarify? I think what Director Shannon meant was it's, it's nothing to do with Christmas. The advertising for the 2021 program would start before Christmas. You have round one and two. So what I would envisage, I haven't got it in my mind, but I can't remember, but I think the advertising for the community grants, it's in council's hands, but they want to be consistent. But I thought around July or August or something, they advertised for the first round of next year's, but uh, I know the staff would have more detail, but yeah, it certainly wouldn't be after Christmas. So they wouldn't be, yep. yeah. Um, is that your view, um, Joe? Uh, yes, it is, Adrian. So we would normally run the program. I think it's in August. To um, yeah. August, we bring it back to council, and then we open it up for applications for um, a number of weeks. So, uh, with a view to having decisions made, uh, perhaps in the September meeting. Oh, well, that's good. That gives everyone an opportunity if there are some projects out there. So, yeah, uh, Council Whitechurch, um, would you like to make a brief comment now? Or? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I was um, basically reiterating some of the things. Um, as Councillor Longmire said, there's, there will be another round of um, funding coming out before Christmas. Um, this was a very low number of entries or applications for the grants that didn't uh, reach the allocated funds. I guess the worry for the Chamber will be that if there was a high level of activities coming up through the summer period, exiting COVID-19, there may be a case that all of the funds wouldn't be available or they may be omitted. So the reason for looking for that one-off um, yeah. inclusion was for that reason that there's funds there um, and there's still going to be a carryover. Um, so that's why I was going to include it. Thanks, Councillor Whitechurch. And just before we um, vote on, I might just ask the General Manager to clarify the amendment. So the way I'd say the wording would be uh, moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Law. The amendment would be that Council notes the report on the Community Grant Program Round 2. Council approved the funding allocation for Round 2 of the 1920 Community Grant Program totaling 12,864 as follows. And then Rochelle would change the table to include the Chamber of Commerce project for three grand. And then point three would be that Council reallocates 27,000 of unspent funding from the 1920 Community Grants Program to the 2021 Community Grants Program. Okay, councillors, uh, all in favour? That's the amendment. That's the amendment. Yep. Aye. Yeah. Against? The amendment becomes the motion. Put the motion. So the amendment becomes the motion now. I'll now put the motion. All in favour? Aye. Against? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. That's good. We're over. Well, just call our Director of Development back in. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That completes your report. Thanks, Mr Mayor. You're welcome. We've just got a slight break. We're looking for our Director of Development and Environmental Services might have uh, shot through. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We've got um, item number nine, Director of Development and Community Services, 9.1 building approvals, complying uh, construction certificates approved. Uh, there's a recommendation there, councils. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Uh, any questions or comments on any of those? If not, I shall put it all in favour. 
against against carry. Thank you. Uh, item 9.2 develop. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, 9.2 development applications approved under delegated staff authority since the April 220 ordinary council meeting. Another recommendation there, councillors. Moved by councillor. Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Meagle. Any questions or comments? I'll put it. All in favour? Against? Carried, thank you. 9.3, regional and state significant development applications lodged. Recommendation there, councillors. Uh, Councillors to note the report of regional and state significant development application lodged. Moved by Councillor Councillor, can I have a move, please? Councillor Meagle, thank, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Kennedy by the look of that. All in favour? Against? Carried, thank you. 9.4, Draft Federation Local Strategic Planning Statement. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Uh, this is uh, significant strategic work, um, guide for the future land use and it's well done. Uh, thank you, uh, Director. So we've got a recommendation there, moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Longmire. And a question. I have a question. Yeah, a question if I may ask Councillor Longmire, I've got. Councillor Longmire, I've got uh, you there. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Am okay. I available, able to, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Councillor Longmire. Okay, um, in the draft um, document that's 33 pages plus long, which was very interesting, I noticed two things. One, in regard to um, the, uh, the census numbers that were taken five years ago, which uh, I thought, not altogether, but in some instances in generalisation, uh, but there were, were some other uh, local uh, later numbers um, produced. But the other one, which has been on the LEP draft for a long time and the previous Corowa Council was the bypass that was um, designed and measured many, oh, quite a long time ago. And I didn't see any occurrence of that within the draft opportunity in the Corowa Township area. Thank you, Councillor Longmore. Well, I'll refer that to Director Appleyard for comment. Thanks, Councillor Longmore. <clears throat> Uh, we can take that on notice. This is out on exhibition um, and we, we do want comments from the public and from the councillors. So we'll take that on board and, and I'll review that information. I think it's a very good point. Also, there's there's one flag there for a couple of other towns because we look at So if there's been any, especially if there's been any previous work and discussion on it uh, as well. But yeah, with 20 years is a long time. So I think any of those ideas should be brought forward for probably most, most of our towns if they haven't got a, a good alternate route already. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. General Manager. It goes back a, a long way, it's a, and especially since the new bridge was uh, brought into position. Um, it, it actually, for those that aren't aware of it, it turns into Bully Court Road off Honor Avenue, and it goes right around the northern end of the industrial area, and then links up with Redlands Road, and then supplementary to that, it goes down another section, another roadway down to alongside uh, Skanes Lane, and uh, comes out on, um, Spring Drive, yeah, it's a wonderful plan, but once again, it hasn't been pursued because of finance, but when you look at the situation of three school crossings within the uh, township of Corowa, the ex extra extra traffic that uh, in the heavy uh, trucks and that going out to the uh, industrial area near the airport, I think it's one that's worthy of consideration and council certainly has a lot of detail done on many, many years ago. Thank you. Thanks for uh, raising that, Councillor Longmire. Uh, Councillor Thomas. Uh, just to move on from what uh, Councillor Longmire was bringing forth, uh, yes, I was really interested to look at the statistics between the towns and the villages, considering this significant document has, you know, the aspect and presentation and content, which is very different, I feel, from the previous document that we're moving on from. And would I be correct in saying that this particular document, document and its approach, which aligns with um, the other plans that set the foundations for council delivery, that 
with this new document, it will actually give more scope to achieve and deliver the key planning priorities outlined. Yeah, I'll refer that on to our director and just add before the end that I think uh, our director's done a great job on, oh, on pulling a lot more local issues on, but I'll send that over to Susan, yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor, and thank you, General Manager. Uh, these, This is the framework to guide the strategic land use planning for the council area for the next 20 years, um, and it is to link in with our community strategic plan as well. There is to be a direct link. Mm, I can definitely see that, which is brilliant. So with uh, other points of call, I've come up with a number of um, questions in regards to this draft. I was just wondering what would be the best avenue to get those um, looked at? Would, are we going to progress with this in a workshop or am I to email them through for follow-up? What do you suggest? We can look at it this afternoon in the council workshop and you can email them through as well. Yeah, I might just do both just to get clarification and get them on the table. Thank you. Yep. Just a question. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Whitechurch. Councillor Whitechurch. Long, Longley, I think. Oh, no, Whitechurch, yeah. Uh, Councillor Whitechurch. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, appreciate the, uh, the draft um, strategic plan on, and I'm just reading the statement. I know that we've got to set a timeline, but 20 years to put a statement that far out um, based on what we plan we're going to do. I know you've got to have some vision and some projections, but you think back 20 years, there would never have been a, a thought of a solar farm being put on rural land. Um, and there's, there's certainly things that are going to be changing all the time. Um, it, where does that scope come into it in that 20 year time frame? for my own benefit? Is, is there, um, you know, a, a midterm one or a 10 year one that, because I'm sure in 20 years time, get based on what the people at the solar farm were telling us on our tour the other day, um, there's potentially solar farms going to be everywhere in the next 10 years in this area. Thanks. I'll refer that to our director for comment. Uh, thank you, Councillor Watchich. If you have a look at the document, we've indicated that we need to look at the transgrid proposal uh, for that will be between uh, Urana, Borey Creek and Marunda. So we're, we're looking at that. The other thing that's been built into this document is it'll be reviewed with our community strategic plan. So it'll be reviewed every four years. So we have got scope to alter the document as things arise for this region. Perfect, thank you. Councillor Longley, was that a, did yeah. you have a question there? Yeah, I've got a question and uh, I'm not sure. I must be missing, missing some documentation, but I haven't seen this uh, this this uh, document and most of the other documents coming up, I haven't seen either. Okay, well, um, after this meeting, we, we'll we'll check and make sure that you've got um, good access to them, Council Longley. Thank you. Uh, Council, any further questions there, councillors? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Meagle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, congratulations to the director for um, a really good starting point. Uh, we've always had issues with um, higher levels of government and in terms of planning at times. And it was um, in a workshop many, many months ago, it was decided uh, or stated that we needed a, a strategic planning document. We finally got one. And the fact that it is being reviewed every four years gives it some flexibility, as Councillor Whitechurch pointed out, things change very quickly. And now we've got the ability to adapt to those changes as they occur. So. Congratulations on a good document and um, it's a great start. Hopefully that will allow us to progress a lot of um, planning issues and projects where we would have otherwise been held up by state. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Meagle. Were you suggesting a round of applause there, Councillor Meagle? I think that'd be very appropriate. It's a great document. <laughs> Um, I, I would like to thank uh, my planning staff as well. They've been instrumental in getting this together in such a short period of time. Excellent. Thanks very much. Was there any further questions there, councillors? If not, I'll, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Uh, which one? Uh, okay, 9.5 councillors. This is the draft master plan and business case ballpark caravan park Corolla. Uh, there is a recommendation there. Would someone like to move um, this recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded, seconded by Councillor Law. Council Law. Thank you. Uh, it's another big, another big uh, project. A few 
few years uh, ago started and proceeds to uh, renew park um, and rectify uh, you know the issues that we had in the park so it's a very positive one uh, any questions or comments here councillors Councillor. Yeah, Mr Mayor, uh, again, uh, it's certainly one of the big things that uh, this council's probably the, the biggest um, that we've had to take on. The pool was obviously the other one. But I think the, the town and the people are really uh, excited about what's going to happen. But this uh, master plan that's coming out now is going to show that uh, things haven't just been uh, pushed to the side. We haven't been sitting on our hands. There's a lot of background work gone into it, a lot of consulting, um, and I'd like to commend everybody that's been involved to get it to where we've got to. Um, it certainly is going to be a great project and I believe that uh, when this goes on display, it will certainly create a lot of uh, talk and then of course now we've got to follow through and make it happen. Thank you, Councillor Whitechurch. Councillor Law. Uh, no, uh, you're on mute, Councillor Law. Yes, okay. I think it's a very exciting project to go ahead. It's going to bring visitors to the town, to the whole area. It's, it's such a, a brilliant plan. It's amazing for, for it to be worked out as it has been. It's going to be so much better than it ever was. And it's just an excellent um, job that's been done. And I'd like to congratulate the people who've worked on it. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anything else? Can, any further comments here, Councillors? Yes, Mr Mayor. Councillor Meagle. Yeah, I think that I uh, agree with Councillor Law and Councillor Whitechurch. Uh, the opportunity to maximise uh, the economic benefit of, to the region with this uh, master plan is should not be underestimated. I really commend the consultants. I think they've done a marvellous job. And the way that they have looked at it in its entirety, not just a, a lick of paint and a few new buildings or anything, They've really gone into it thoroughly and highly commend it as a way forward. It has the opportunity to be a real game changer for Corowa and for the local area. So really support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Meagle. Councillor Thomas, you have a question? I just more of a comment. Just um, when we had the opportunity to engage with a consultant and ask questions, I really enjoyed seeing how they had broken it down into four key sites. But at the same time in their delivery, you know, they're tr still treating it as a whole. And that's how, you know, as we move forward, it's exciting to see it as a whole. And this, um, the plan actually gives some really clear vision and clarity and purpose for this precinct. And the long-term planning around it will, as setting some really strong goals for, for council. So thank you. Absolutely, uh, council. Thomas. And uh, there's no doubt Jim and Neville have been fantastic to work with. They're um, it's some you know really great ideas, and they've done a ma magnificent job, as you've all said. Uh, is there anything further on that, councillors? If not, I'll put that one. All in favour? Um, excuse me, is my camera on? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll take that question, Council Wales. Oh, it's not, not a, no, just a comment, Mr. V. I'd just like to say it's going to be fantastic when it's finished and what better location where it is where that Murray River goes around the boundary. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Wiles. Now, what, did I miss anyone else or cut uh, anyone else from an opportunity? No, if not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Thank you. Now we're up to 9.6 uh, development application 220-6. Uh, there's a recommendation there, councillors. I'll just get back to that. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Thomas, was that? Did you move that, Councillor Thomas? Or did you put your hand up or not? Kennedy. No, 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 no. Councillor Wales, was it? Councillor, Councillor Wales and Councillor Kennedy. And Councillor, um, any questions or comments? Councillor Whitechurch, was that a... Oh, no, but I'm happy to comment, um, Mr Mayor, the, um, I believe, and, and some of my uh, other councillors that have been on the former Corridor Shrine might agree that I believe this has been looked at on a couple of different occasions, or certainly on one. Um, the development application conditions that uh, we've, our, our staff have looked at in regarding to this have certainly, I believe, covered everything that would need to be and any potential buyer or, or um, part of the development is, is going to have to look at all those things that 
are in place around the, the feedlot and et cetera. So that being said, um, you know, if they have to comply with all that and, and agree, we'll maybe for it to go forward. Thank you, Councillor Whitechurch. Any further comments, councillors? Remember, they've got to record the vote. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, sorry, sorry, Councillor Meagle. Thank you. Just um, to uh, support Councillor Whitechurch's comments, the the uh, um, objections or that were put in had had some validity, and it was great that uh, we were able to go back to the developers and then put something in place that addressed those concerns. So having, especially with that um, 88 uh, instrument over, section 88 instrument over the top of it, I think that um, puts the onus certainly back on the developer and on the purchasers uh, to be aware of um, the, their surroundings. So happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Neagle. Um, councillors, I'll need to record this vote. So uh, if you might give me a chance to count the votes, please. Uh, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Uh, Councillor, so I've got Whitechurch, Councillor Whitechurch, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Meagle, uh, Councillor Thomas, what, where are you? I can't see you. Yep. Do we have any against? Councillors against? No. Uh, okay. Carried, thank you. Okay. We uh, nine point seven. State significant application eighty eight oh four. How long sand and gravel quarry expansion? Here's someone's mic's on. There's a slight change to uh, slight. Susan's got a slight change. Um, endorse comments. Uh, could be a positive thing, but impacts have been to Susan can read out manage the change. Yeah. And Susan happen. might read out the uh, change. Uh, councillors, late last night I sent you through uh, uh, the submission. The submission that council would be uh, a draft submission that council can make regarding this application. Um, after assessing the application with the staff internally, we believe we need additional information to ensure that there's no adverse impacts from this. So, um, on the screen in front of you now is an alternative recommendation to that printed in the agenda. And essentially it means that we note the report, that we seek additional information and that um, you grant delegation to myself to negotiate any conditions of consent um, regarding the application once we've received the additional information. Um, with item three, the that would just give me delegation to negotiate the conditions and I would still report it back to council for final determination. Thank you, councillors. Um, councillors, have you all had a chance to read that recommendation? If so, can I have a move, please? Can move by Councillor Whitechurch. Kennedy. Second by Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments, councillors? Councillor Whitechurch. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Obviously, this is uh, another big thing that's uh, going to affect the township of how long and whether it, um, in some people's eyes, is perceived to be good or some people perceive it to be bad. And I know that our social media pages aren't the be-all, end-all, but uh, there has been a lot of comments both for and against this um, proposed development on the how long pages. That being said, um, we're all in favour of bringing more business and, and more uh, employment to a town. So... I totally agree with our director there to investigate further and, and make sure that um, A, that the business is going to be okay to go and do what they're going to do, but B, that the entire district and township of Howell and, and further afield is not going to be affected detrimentally by it. So I, I applaud that uh, recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Watchers. Councillor Longley. Councillor Longley, you have to turn your mic on there, please. <coughs> Press your mic. Thank, Thank you. Body. You got me? Gotcha. Okay. Um, personally, I, I, I don't have anything against the development as such, more about the traffic flow out of that site through the main street of uh, the town of Howlong. Um, already it's congested. Um, another additional 80 trucks, average weight at, at 60 tonne going up there. And people, we've got reverse parking. Sorry, not reverse parking, forward uh, parking, we have to reverse into oncoming traffic 
there have been a number of very near misses where I've actually seen it where a truck has had to pull into out, out uh, oncoming traffic um, to, to avoid an accident because you can't see around a four-wheel drive or an SUV when you're in your car. So you, you're reversing out, you're three-quarters of the way out before you see what's coming. Um, and that's, I'm, I'm not the only one that's seen those sort of near misses. Uh, I'm just concerned that the in, it's already a problem now, the trucks in that street, and another increase of uh, 80 trucks a day would be detrimental to our business community there. Uh, it'd be great if we could find another way to get them around how long. Definitely, Councillor Longley. Uh, and I think that's subjective. I might just ask our director here to make a comment on that, Councillor Longley. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. If you have a look at the submission that I sent through last night, that's the first item of concern, is uh, the traffic impact assessment and the impact it will have on the centre of how long. OK, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Any further comments here, councillors? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Meagle. Thank you. Uh, thank you to uh, Director Appleyard for sending through the um, the submission. I thought it was very well thought out, and it certainly um, recognised both the pros and the cons. And I think this is um, to support the recommendation. We do need additional information. Everybody would like to see progress in our region. However, it needs to be sustainable and um, not damage the environment, especially considering uh, where this development is to be located and the impact that it will have on, on the township of Howlock. So if we could sort of bring forward the um, long, uh, the strategic planning statement and the 20 year project so that we can get a bypass for how long, that would be um, pretty advantageous to this development. So we need as much information as possible and a very good uh, submission, uh, Ms Appleyard, well done. Thank you, Council Meagle. Would there be any more comments there, councillors? If not, the recommendation is before you on the screen. I'll put it all in favour. No. Against? Carried. Thanks very much. Uh, 9.8. Proposed Korean Rural Fire Service Shed Site on Reserve uh, 49134 Lot 166DP 753746. There's a recommendation there for you. Before you, councillors, could I have a mover, please? Yeah. Moved by Councillor Law. No move. Wales. Second by Councillor Longmire. Uh, any questions or comments there, councillors? Nothing? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carried. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Director Appleyard. Fine report. Uh, councillors, would you like uh, five minutes to stretch five minutes to stretch your legs? So, would someone like to uh, move to? Um, they moved. They moved. Moved by Councillor Wales, seconded by Councillor Longmire. All in favour? Against. Carried. Thank you. We'll meet back in five minutes, if you like, councillors. Five or ten minutes. Three, two, one. Okay, councillors, uh, would someone like to move to resume standing orders, please? So moved. moved by, moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Wales. All in favour? Against? Aye. Carried. Thank you. We're up to item 10, Director of Engineering Services Report. 10.1, the report on the... Pro I'm sorry, I'd just like to note that uh, Councillor... Um, Councillor... Um, Kennedy. Kennedy is um, out of the council meeting due to technical reasons and... Uh, will re resume when possible. Okay, 10.1, report on progress of works program, April 2020. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by councillor. So moved. Uh, seconded by councillor. Law, uh, any questions or comments, councillors? I'll put it, all in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Sorry, thank you. 10.2 uh, report on the progress of Capital Works program April 2020. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Moved by move councillor. For the, move for the question. A uh, uh, question on that report. I'll just get a mover and then uh, I'll take yeah, a move with the question. I move. Oh, sorry. So, moved by councillor. 
Thomas seconded by Councillor Wales. Wales. Question, Councillor Thomas. Unmute myself. Uh, is Jeff to Carmichael there? In, in, uh, he, yeah, he is. I'll, yeah. I'll just take the question. I'll refer no it over. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I just was really uh, looking at the the progress and was after some clarification about the time frames with the flood studies for Mawela, Howell and Cora. And I probably just needed some clarity on how they once presented fitted into to our plans, but it actually became a little bit clearer when I was looking through our draft local strategic planning statement. I could see the connections, but once these um, flood studies are complete, that they will connect back to those key documents and especially our upcoming LEP. But if we can just have a time frame on how we're progressing with those um, flood studies and probably a little bit of background on what that involves. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Thomas. That project is managed through uh, our environmental planning section. So Susan's above those big projects. So I'll refer that one to Susan. There's a lot of engineering amongst it, but yeah, Susan will lead that one. Um, thank you. Uh, the Urana flood study is due to be completed and I'm hoping to have a report to the July meeting of Council to put the draft out on exhibition with a gut plan. Flood plan, flood plan risk management study and plan. With the flood study for how long Moela and Cora, we're working with the department at the moment to prepare the brief to go out for tenders. So that will probably be around a two, two and a half year project. And can I just have a follow up question? So, how does that then feed back into our LEP and our strategic planning documents? Okay, so when we when we have the flood study, uh, we ref we will reference that particular flood study into the local environmental plan on completion and adoption. So there'll be an amendment to the local environmental plan. Thank you. Question, question please. Councillor Longley, was it? Yes. Um, uh, Susan, just read the flood study. Flat country like How Long and, and, and Mawaila, that could have a large bearing on what our future um, planning would look like, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Uh, the main planning outcome that will come from the study is we'll define the flood planning area for each of the towns and define the flood fringes and the floodways so we can define where development can occur. Okay. all the restrictions that we need to put in place or whether we need to have other protections in place. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Thomas, the, um, just to give you an idea on time frames, I think you ran a flood study, started with previous council, we're probably into about six years. It did. Yeah, 2014 I think it started. 2014 it started, so uh, if you can deliver one within two and a half years, it'll be a record. <laughs> okay, uh, any further questions on that? Andrew Kennedy, yeah. Council of Eagle. Thank you. Uh, ple very pleasing to see the high percentage of 100 percenters out of that capital works program. It was a probably one of the biggest uh, capital works programs delivered by this council thus far. And to see the progress rather than everybody scrambling in the last couple of months to try and get somewhere near it, the, uh, the progress and the systematic approach is... Um, very pleasant to see, and congratulations to the engineering department. Thank you, Council Meagle. I couldn't agree more. Great report, and uh, yes, very strong progress. So congratulations as well. Uh, any further questions there, councillors, on that one? Can I just make a comment, please, Mr Mayor? Yes. Come on. Director Carmichael? Yeah, it's uh, pleasing to note that we've had 100%, but I seem to be getting in trouble with the finance department because when you complete a project, you spend the money. So uh, you can't have your cake and eat it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Anything further, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Carrie, thank you. 10.3 uh, is a report on the progress of stronger community funding. Works April 2020. There's a recommendation there, Moot. Uh, councillors, would someone like to move it, please? Councillor Law. Moved by Councillor Law, was it? Yeah. Councillor Law, thank you. And seconded by uh, Thomas. 
Uh, any questions or comments, councillors? Just a quick comment again, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you were correct, there was a very uh, bright glow in the sky last night, uh, identified to be out Rennie Way. Uh, and the lights got switched on, and I've seen some photos this morning, and uh, I think it looks like uh, Councillor Kennedy might even have sunglasses on while he's out there trying to have a kick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, th I uh, there was a lot of excitement out there, I believe, last night, and I think the same will happen tonight. Uh, Carmichael is excellent. And I'm, uh, happy, ha I'm happy Kennedy, to inform Kennedy, that... Councillor um, Kennedy's back. Would you like to make a comment on that? Sorry, everyone, I lost internet, but I'm hooked on through my phone. Lucky I'm a technical whiz. But, um... <laughs> Councillor, I'd like to, like to be informed that um, Rennie's job was done on budget, too. There didn't was no overridings in, in the budget for the Rennie lights, so I think that will make everyone happy. Excellent. I'm very pleased with that. Councillor, Councillor Law, was that, sorry? Yes, I said Councillor Law is very pleased with that, that you didn't go over budget. Good idea, Councillor Law. Uh, any further comments on those projects, Councillors? If not, I'll put them all in favour. Aye. Against? Gary. Thank you. Okay, 10.4, Whitehead Street, Crown Road transfer to Council. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Would someone like to move it, please? Moved by Councillor Longwire, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Uh, any questions or comments there, councillors? Doesn't look like it. I'll, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you. 10.5 subdivision of minutes from section 355 committee. Uh, committees, Oakland's rec ground. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Could I move it, please? Moved by Councillor Wales, is it? Thank yep. you. Seconded by Councillor uh, Councillor Law. Would you like to move second that, Councillor Law? Yes, I'll do that. Thanks, Councillor Law. Any questions or comments, councillors? Not. I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. 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 Against carried. Thank you. Ten point six. Council of council quarries approvals and compliance. Another recommendation there, councillors. Moved by councillor Longmire, seconded by councillor Meagle. Any questions or comments, councillors? I'll put it. All in favour. Aye. Against carried. Uh, ten point seven. Uh, tender report replacement of three trucks. For greater crew, vendor request for quote. Uh, there's the recommendation there, councillors. Would someone like to move that recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Kennedy. Ken yep. Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Longmire. Yep. Thank you. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I shall put it all in favour. Against. Carried. Thank you. 10.8, draft, structure plan, Coral Foreshore Precinct and Morris Park. Uh, a couple of pages in, there's a recommendation there, councillors. So moved. Moved by Councillor yeah, Meek. Second by Councillor Longmore. Uh, 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 any questions or comments, councillors? No, Mr Mayor. Councillor Whitechurch. Yeah, I think uh, another amazing thing that uh, this council's looked into and I have said at different meetings that many a time you see consultants come in and plans take place. But I think if the council and, and future councils are going to stick to this foreshore and Morris Park development, I'm sure when the town sees it, they'll be very happy and we've just got to stick to our guns and apply for the grants and make it happen. Excellent, Council Watchers. I think you're barking up the wrong, the right track there. Um, Councillor Longmire. I think it's a wonderful opportunity when this is released for uh, the persons of the community of Corra to uh, have a look at that they come forward as best they can and as often as they can in, a, in an opportunity for ownership, meaning that going forward, Council's done a, a mighty job and put this plan together. And so 
without wanting to demand or, or whatever. It would be great if, if the community could see what the benefit would be of these sort of opportunities. And in the past, many, many years ago, they used to step up a lot of service clubs and other organisations to do fundraising. And I think some generalisation of when we have to find the money to do this, obviously it'll be in stages, um, that some community groups, uh, service clubs, and anybody else that wants to step up to the plate and say, yeah, we'd like to support the opportunity to find the funding to make this happen. Absolutely, Councillor Longmire. And as has been said, it, it's it's a um, would be the largest uh, capital works program with the pool on the caravan park, that, and it's, it was a ma it's a massive thing to take on, and this council's done that. Um, so we, we're obviously going to have to apply to our state and uh, federal funding partners for opportunities there as well. Uh, Councillor Law, when, when this goes ahead, it will certainly make Federation Council a go-to destination. It can hold sporting events things there, um, all the local communities can come in, the smaller towns can come in and use these facilities. I think it's an excellent thing. It's gonna take a long time and a lot of money, but it's certainly worth the trouble. And it, it's funny just to note when you say that community, we've got a really good buy-in with Ball Park and, and the public to that river access, which I think is fantastic. That was really lacking, I felt. Um, Council Mingle, did I see you had your hand up there before? You're not on the main screen at the moment. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate that. Um, no one could accuse this council of not thinking big. Uh, this is a massive piece of work, and I'd like to uh, support all the previous comments. The ability to come up with a game plan for not just the foreshore, but for Morris Park as well, and for all our sporting recreation, uh, as has uh, been mentioned before, the consultants have done a tremendous job. It's a really good document and it provides a long-term framework for council to proceed and hopefully future councils to proceed. I really uh, support the document. I think it's a marvellous piece of work and that it will take time. It will take a lot of money, but at least we've got a plan and a vision going forward. We've had a council meeting today with a lot of long-term projects in them and a lot of forward thinking. So it's, as you said before, exciting times to develop those frameworks, to put something in place that we can then go to state and federal governments asking for uh, support and for funding and have uh, this, the background work done so that we can uh, proceed. It's um, a brilliant document, probably one of the best I've seen, for, certainly for Coro and certainly for Federation. Well done. Thank you, Council Meagle. I'll just pass it over to the General Manager to make a comment. Yeah, just a quick comment, Councillors. It's, it's obviously been said it's a very uh, forward-looking strategic plan that ties in the natural and the built assets and future assets right around the, the whole precinct. And, and as Councillor Longmire mentioned a bit earlier, when the sunrise went to Mildura this morning, and I know it's a lot bigger city, but there's just as many assets around Kyra um, and beyond that could capitalise on the Murray River, and I think that's what's um, ahead of us and it's a lot being done already. You look at the boardwalk when it comes up in those visual images that we're going to go out to public with the boardwalk which is already funded and, and underway or soon to be underway right around to the lagoon from the bridge. That was a subject of a 2010, I think it was a Cora Shire for shore plan. So uh, that's examples of things that are coming forward. So this plan is about showing what already is happening as much as what can happen in the future and integrating all that together. Um, and just down, we've seen it, uh, the examples where how long could benefit from a plan like this. Uh, we've seen down there at Yarrawonga what they're uh, coming forward with and they're, I know they're predicating where the bridge might go, but Yarrawonga's pretty aggressive in there. Foreshore planning and Mawala, uh, similar, had a thing years ago, but again, um, we'll wait till we know what's going on with that bridge, but we want to make sure that we can use this sort of planning to inform our community and influence government. Uh, and like Councillor Longmire said, even our sporting clubs to be able to all look at the bigger picture and instead of, um, as they need to be, bogged down in their own operations, I think that give it a huge chance to create a lot of partnerships. So, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Mr so. Mayor, can I make a comment, please? I'd love you to, Councillor Longley. Yeah. I, I think the, the vision there of the whole community um, structure is, is great. Um, but the thing that's really exciting me is that the, there are going to be jobs in this, more jobs, more jobs and more jobs. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. 
and it'll help improve the economy of Korra and, and then ultimately the Federation Council. Yeah, and I look, I, I couldn't agree more. And it, I, it's also, um, besides, it, it's regionally significant, this project. Um, it, it's magnificent. It's going to make it unique. And I, I think council staff, everyone should be proud of it. It, it. it was a massive thing to take on. But anyway, it's, it's here, it's with us, so um, we can uh, bounce ahead. Any further comments here, councillors? If I may, Mr Mayor. Councillor Longmire. Yeah, I think um, the, the, the future going forward is when I mentioned in my comments about ownership. And it's nobody's fault, but the culture of Corowa over many years um, was related to the big service clubs that had enormous amount of poker machines. And I can go back a long time ago where in any sporting organisation, you only had to go to one of those clubs to be able to get funding to buy a set of jumpers for the junior footy club or whichever way. But when it changed and Victoria got the poker machines, it's still there and it's nobody's fault that there is still, there has been a past generation of people that used to rely on the sporting clubs. That's now gone. And I come forward with the opportunity that if the clubs can come of their own ability and strategic planning to complement, sorry, uh, ability to, to complement this strategic plan in regard to fundraising and lots of things they can do, and then that attains ownership. I think there'll be a great connection. And uh, in some ways I will, and I've always said it, that Low Square in How Long is a great example where you've got an organisation where um, the sporting groups come together, they have their own committee and they plan together and that's the future for what this plan should be. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Councillor. I absolutely agree. That ownership not only um, gives uh, a personal a personal um, satisfaction to people but it also long term it, um, it, it saves the council a hell of a lot of money as well. Um, any further comments here, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Oh. Sorry, was it? Was it? I, I called against. Nothing. Carried. Thank you very much. Well done. Okay. Uh, number. So that concludes that report from um, Director Carmichael. We move on now to number eleven. Notice of motion or questions with notice. <coughs> notice of motion. We have one moved by Councillor Thomas. Second, Wales. Uh, so we've got a second, Councillor Wales. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, questions, questions or comments, Councillors? I have which you? Yes, Councillor Thomas. So, as you would be aware, since we have pulled together this um, this motion or recommendation is that there was an announcement of 3% that's come forward from the New South Wales water. Uh, that was effective on the 15th of May and the Murrumbidgee is sitting on 11%, which is really exciting because we're, you know, moving forward in this space, which, as you know, has been an ongoing now for quite a while. So that first recommendation, uh, I would like to change that, if that was okay. Yeah, that... that that'd be yeah. a motion. Yeah, 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 I just need to change it, obviously, because we've had some water come forward. So I'd just like to propose that we change the first part of the of the two parts. Uh, that council write to New South Wales State Water Authorities acknowledging the three percent allocation for general security water entitlement holders, with explanation that further announcements would be most welcome as season progresses for both winter and summer crops. That'd be very appropriate. Can I type that in? Do you want me to type it in and send it to Rochelle or how would you like me to go about that? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. If you could email that through to Rochelle, she can add that. To yeah. The yep. Do, does any other fellow councillors want me to reread that those changes? Did you all, all understand that, councillors? Yep. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. So just, just to follow oh, on from that, I don't know whether you can see this example, but I've got a jar here and it's a jar full of rice and it was harvested two weeks ago within um, Federation Council which is really <laughs> exciting. Uh, it's still got the husk on the outside so it's still very much in its raw uh, content but we can produce really good 
uh, basic resource food within Federation Council. We just need one thing and it's cold water. So there's my plug for the rice industry. Uh, I think COVID-19, one thing that has highlighted out of COVID-19 is, you know, our basic foods can be produced within our own borders and in our own shores. And just a little fun fact is that the rice industry are predicting that with our rice reserves, we will run out by September. So let's hope we can get some more water and get some more of this growing within Federation because I think this was the only one grown in Federation. The closest one to this was Finley and Geraldry. Uh, point two is that council supports the West Karugan irrigation application to increase access to additional stock and demand. Uh, I've had some correspondence with West Karugan with their CEO, Andrew, in and around what we're moving forward with today. And one of the highlighted things was that uh, they have really experienced during the seasonal conditions that there was actually a significant shortfall in the stock and domestic was really evident through this time, hence this um, this uh, recommendation to move forward. And if you go back to the basic New South Wales Legislative uh, Water Management Act of 2000, the first cap off the rank in that Water Management Act is basic water rights. And I think that really supports uh, our second recommendation to move forward today. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Is there any further comments from the Council? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, just a uh, question uh, to, I guess, Councillor Thomas or some of them might be able to enlighten me. Uh, point two there, where the Council supports the West Caribbean irrigation application to increase access to additional stock and domestic water. Um, I know that we've had discussion before about the Caribbean being a private sector, um, and there's obviously quite a few farms that are off that cooking scheme. Uh, what sort of support are we talking there, Councillor Thomas? Is it uh, and yep. financial support or is it just to support their application in principle? So I can add comment to that. Uh, so in and around this space is that, you know, when we met with them in Oakland, uh, they mentioned the other two private irrigation schemes. The, the, the other two private irrigation schemes are actually located within the Murray River Council LGA. And if you move on from that, they're actually uh, also part of the, um, the RAMJO the joint organisation, and so they are actually doing this as one contingent, not just as three individuals in this space of stock and domestic um, water. So I would imagine if we could send through or touch base with them and get a letter of support to them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any further comments or questions to councillors? Can I just make one further comment in terms of our private irrigation scheme, West Karugan, is that yes, they very much welcome the 3% allocation, but they will not turn that water, water wheel on until there's a minimum of 10% that comes through. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. They, they nearly need another um, 3,000 meg, 3,000 meg to get the channel to work. Is that That's right? Correct. It's the conveyance water that they're waiting for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. So, uh, I just wanted to say, does that answer your question, Councillor Whitechurch? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Thomas. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing further, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Aye. Against? Carrie. Thank you. Now we have uh, 12 reports from committees. Um, there'll be no items, but number 13, reports from delegates. Uh, any verbal reports from delegates? Councillor Law. Councillor Law. <coughs> On the 4th of May, I attended um, our Ageing Well group and this wonderful resource that they have come up with. They are trying to find some more funds to deliver it to all households. It's a magnificent thing. It shows um, all the council facilities, allied health services, financial and legal services, housing accommodation, entertainment, anything that the elderly might need to help them age well in our society. So we are trying to get some more funding to print some more copies of this. It's an excellent magazine for anybody who is ageing. Excellent, Councillor. Also, 
on the 4th of May, I attended um, the um, Federation Arts and, and you know, what are we called? Arts and Cultural Advisory Committee. And it came up through the meeting of the graffiti that is in the area at the moment. It's really bad. And we were wondering if council has a graffiti policy, if they could support some of the local businesses in cleaning up their properties to get rid of the graffiti. And also on our own council assets, there's a lot of graffiti on those and it really doesn't look good and it needs some work done to it to clean it up. Also the art space, we've missed one, um, um, exhibition in the art space. It was it was the schools throughout New South Wales, all of their um, year 12 work, which is, comes in an exhibition because the art space is the wrong colour. All art galleries should be painted white and ours is cream or beige and it's not, it, it's losing us exhibitions. So if we could find a couple of thousand dollars to paint the art space white, that would be most appreciated. Well, Thank community. you. Council Law, that might be a good one to start off with the community grants project. Sorry, I can't. Um, council Law, you might press your mute button. Because it's a council structure, I'm not sure whether the Arts Committee are able to apply for that. I would have thought it would fit community projects, eh? We'll have a look. Have yeah. a look, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any, any, um, thank you, Councillor. Is there anything further? Or Councillor yeah. Longmore? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. In regard to a report from the Australian Livestock Sale Yards Association Executive Meeting on the 8th of May uh, via Zoom in Dot Point, um, the topic was about uh, sheep weighing research at Bendigo on hold because of the coronavirus uh, uh, at the moment. Um, down the track, they're looking at weighing sheep before they um, uh, sell them, a bit like cattle. So that's another thing that is on, on, on the drawing board. Uh, mobile phone app for Elsa, that's something they're looking at also. A website provider discussion, discussion still happening um, to go forward with. Um, the interesting one is I have data keys access to truck washing facilities at sale yards. It's being looked at because other users, not just stock transport, are using these wash down facilities at sale yards, meaning that effluent becomes contaminated with all sorts of stuff out of the back of tubs that are carting anything, grain, rubbish, you name it. And so they're not sure how the opportunity has been given um, through the access of the keys to use these facilities other than and stockyard, uh, stock carriers. So that's an interesting one. Another one is the NLIS electronic ear tagging to be looked at for price advantage. Um, it's been suggested that some abattoirs will be going forward with that uh, price advantage. Uh, that's yet to be determined. The annual conference this year has been put off. Uh, the it, workshops will be via Zoom continuing. Um, the concern read the stock transport to infected abattoir at uh, Melbourne, the trucks returning to sale yards, including Corowa. Uh, action was taken by those companies, uh, trucking companies with contracts to replace drivers. And uh, there was an assurance given about the abattoir, from the abattoir manager regarding regulations. Another one that was concerning was new commission buyers coming into uh, operate at sale yards are being interrogated at sale yards for small purchases. They're not using agents. Um, the regular buyers are upset. Uh, an abattoir pick uh, number is required at one sale yard through Victoria just to keep it where they want it. And the business commissioner is investigating some of these actions that are happening. And the other one is a selling option of stock line, which is online selling of stock. It has been decommissioned at one major sale yard um, because of an agent roadblock so the agents at that that, that uh, entity are not accepting of what the way it was so there's a fair bit happening within the industry i know uh, the numbers at coro are, are stable at the moment um, around about the nine or ten thousand head um which is understandable so any questions mr mayor i'm only too glad to take yeah um 
Well, yeah, a couple of council were more, if I may, um, the first one was when they're talking about weighing um, livestock, sheep, uh, will the weighing take place before they're sold or after they're sold? That's, that's a good question and that's part of the process of, of these uh, research opportunities because we know there was a, a, a change of the opportunity with the cattle and so um, yeah, like they, the buyers wanted it after the sale and that's what's happened and so I'm not sure but there's work in progress in that regard for sheep. It was fairly unpopular though, wasn't it, the, the after the sale? Wayne, yeah. Um, yeah. The other one was um, the commission buyers. Do uh, you see commission buyers? Can you elaborate on what what problem they're causing? Uh, it's interesting. I'm not sure. That's what the, the the business commissioner will be investigating to see what's underneath it. Um, because um, if you some of these people have been registering as commission buyers and not buying one 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 head of stock, and so they're not sure what the and there seems to be a bit of a wake up from the regular buyers that there's something there. And I, I can't comment and, and the meeting couldn't comment either. But um, as I say and repeat, the business commission is investigating the, what's going on. Yeah, you, you would think that the legal framework would be a problem there, Councillor Longwire, that legal framework of the um, from the seller to the buyer, um, you know, has to be recorded. So uh, interesting one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and the agents, you know, if you wanted to only buy small numbers, obviously you go buy um, the agent, and that's what they're there for. Uh, but yeah. the big buyers, you know, they have their own opportunities. But as I also mentioned, that one abattoir requires, uh, sorry, one sale yard requires an abattoir pick number for you to be able to uh, buy for that off at that sale yard. And, and just my last question on that is. Um, uh, it's been a little bit of a concern of mine in relation to um, <laughs> buying. You know, we, we, I know we've got uh, livestock sold on uh, video link now, but that, it sounded like that's growing. Is, is that what? Is that the case? Oh, look, it's interesting. The, the key to it are the, are the agents. Everywhere you go, um, the industry, it seems to me, is you know, is gearing up towards this stuff. There's a lot of changes uh, coming forward, and certainly with this uh, coronavirus. Uh, process that could bring it uh, quicker and so at the end of the day there will be changes you know in the in the near future in lots of ways so there's still work to be to be done and looked at and so everybody needs to have a look at it and have a say in it. Thanks Councillor Longway. Now I've got a, a question from Councillor Longley to Councillor Longway. Yeah, yeah um, Councillor Longway. Um, you're talking of truck washing and so forth. Is there an opportunity there for washing agricultural machinery coming across the border for biosecurity reasons and things like that? Well, my understanding is that the, the ab data process, when you have that opportunity at the sale yards, uh, and this is where council has to have a defining policy on it, I think it, the process at the moment is that it's specifically available to wash down trucks that cart A.E. the sheep or beef cattle or, or pigs as has happened in the past. So it's animal related. Um, and I think that's where it sits. And so there's, there's an understanding of that opportunity. So, but what's happened in some tail yards, trucks have gone in there with all sorts of stuff and washed down with an ab data key and they're not sure how they've secured that opportunity. Can I, um, can I ask, uh our director Susan to make a comment on that. Yeah. Uh, so as councillors be aware, earlier or late last year, we restricted access to the sale yards on certain days, uh, and that's because we we're experiencing this exact same thing. So we're not only getting people that are using the sale yards or the local piggeries, we're getting any form of person coming in to utilise the AvData system. And my understanding is all they have to do is purchase a key and then they're billed via their AV data system. Can I, can I ask the question to uh, Ms. Afriad in regard to uh, do you see it as a concern with contamination of our uh, effluent at the sale yards or not? Absolutely. We're doing, we're doing some research into that at the moment and hopefully as part of the plan of management that's being developed. We'll see how to resolve that issue. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, any further questions to Councillor Longmire? 
If not, thank you very much for that report. Is, uh, has anyone else got any more verbal reports? Verbal reports, uh, Councillor Thomas, was that? Are oh, you had a question? No, that was me saying I'd like to do a report. I didn't know how else to get your attention. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, I was able to do a couple of virtual meetings, which is really exciting. One was for the Riverina Regional Library Service. And obviously a lot of the discussion was about how they're still delivering such an essential service to so many people who rely on that service. And it was really great to get their feedback. And it was very interesting because they are still progressing forward in this space. And as you would know, is they're even offering home delivery services for those people who would still like to borrow books. I think the connectivity uh, will be re-engaged once we move out of these restrictions and people are really looking forward to getting back to the libraries. Uh, the other thing that we were able to do via teleconference was myself and my fellow councillors, Meagle and Longmire, and our Mayor, Mr Pat Burke, and Mr Butler, was able to look at our um, climate change strategy that we put forward to the MDA and we had some discussion with their CEO, Emma, and Region 1 delegate, which is Councillor Thurley from Albury. So I just really like to thank everyone for the contribution with that teleconference. I think we moved forward in this space really positively, especially in and around uh, not only our discussion with the climate change strategy, which I would think on a local LGA level, a lot of that information will actually come either from our community um, community strategic plan or some of the wording from our LAP, which will be captured in our, um, our climate strategy, especially for our own LGA. And it was really significant that Councillor Meagle was able to jump on board because he is quite an advocate in this space. And I loved hearing what he had to say. And I'd hope that he's happy to continue on that journey with us. Uh, the other interesting point brought forward was that our um, appetite to go from Region 1 into Region 2 and we had really solid discussion about why that could happen and should happen. When asked by Councillor Thurley how we felt we were sitting currently, the percentages I put forward, which seemed to fit quite well with the people on the table on the day, was that, yeah, 30% of the time we probably do sit within Region 1 and about 70% of the time, with our, especially with our water issues, we sit within Region 2. So to follow on from that, on the pun, we have been had invitation to look at going into Region 2 and the process and the protocols around that, and we're currently working in this space. And I would like to think that our climate change strategy document will be presented to our June meeting. Uh, is there any questions or follow-up on that section? Um, maybe from the council, so we're there. Yeah, just uh, just a comment. I thought we um, we found we got good ground uh, between um, region one and region two. It gives us an opportunity to, uh, I suppose, play in both games for a while and, and just see how how that all pans out and works. And maybe the future may be um, part of our uh, membership be you know 50 50 split between those regions i don't know but uh it's i think um aubrey still plays a fairly big part in what we do as well mm. any any okay. further comments here councillors okay. mr mayor i yeah. uh, did i get me um council wales yeah sorry uh the internet for the last five minutes just let you know oh. Oh, okay, no worries. No worries at all. Uh, no, that that's good. Uh, Councillor Thomas, did you have any more reports? Uh, yeah, no, I do have a couple more. Uh, I also had the opportunity to teleconference with uh, Lonsdale Reserve, their last general meeting, which was held last week. I just have a couple of questions I'd like clarified. Uh, if um, Director Shannon is on board, uh, they were quite con interested to find out the funds available to them or if they have spent all their funds with the current master plan and how that's looking. Maybe if we could do a little bit of um, income and expenditure and send it through, that would be brilliant. And they were also interested to know how the Section 355 committee <laughs> process is progressing. And take those questions on board and get back to them or how you'd like to do that? 
Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll take those on board. The, yeah. Yeah. Some of the stuff around the budget will come through our budget yeah. review. And no, next that's budget. fine. That's fine. Good info. And just, yeah, no, and just finally, I'd like to do a big shout out uh, to the Cairo Community Garden and how they've adopted to, this change, to these changes. They've done some really exciting things to keep progressing in this, um, this really valuable precinct of Cairo and beyond. And how they've done that is exciting. They've actually nearly taken on Gardening Australia and done their little virtual videos and uploaded them, which is really exciting. I just thought maybe our comms team, whether Alana, was there was a possibility to actually highlight some of their little their videos that they've been uploading onto social media. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Thomas. Thank you. Mr. Any Mayor? further um, reports, councillors? Yes, Mr Mayor. Councillor Legal. Just to follow on from Councillor Thomas's report on the um, meeting with uh, MDA in Region 1 and 2, I thought it was a very productive meeting and it highlighted um, the structure of the uh, regions themselves, um, how perhaps they needed to look at the overall uh, plan for those regions and that they were very, as you said, we've got good ground on them understanding that uh, we have interest in both regions one and two and as long as we can keep advocating uh, for our water users and our communities uh, it doesn't really matter whether we're in one or two as long as we keep doing it thank you thank you council meagle uh councils will let any other verbal reports if not um I'd, i'll call someone to move those reports please moved by councillor meagles Second. Uh, oh, Councillor Watchers, did you have a comment? No, no, I just happened to second, but you're right. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favour? All right. All right. Again, all right. Yeah. Against carried. Thank you. So uh, now we have correspondence requiring council for information. Uh, I'll just run through 14.1. New South Wales Office of Local Government Circular. We've got the Murray Darling Basin Association, which we've spoken about, and we have the Marwala Progress Association um, report. So, uh, also New South Wales farmers uh, requesting consider of yeah, council consider land valuations and impacts and local government rating. So, I might move them as a block if um, from 14.1 to 14.4. If um, anyone would like to discuss any of those, uh, that, that correspondence, um, yeah, I'll call for now. Councillor uh, Lobby. I'll move to comment. Uh, sorry, I, I'll just take Councillor Longmire. You. Yeah, if I, if I may, Ms. Mayor, in regard to the New South Wales Farmers Land Valuation Rating Impact on Farmers, I think there's a, it's a message. There's a message there in regard to a good position regarding when uh, we sit down to do, and every council will have to do it to assess uh, where they are with the rating increases. I think it's still pegged um, at 2.5. Is that correct, uh, Mr. General Manager? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think there's a lot of. It's pretty basic what they've said, but it's it's right on the money in regard to. Uh, uh, the rating structure in um, in in the, the, the definition of the, what they support um, rate the, the, the rate base. I think we've been in a situation where the old Coroish Eye and the former Uranish Eye had two different rating situations for rural land. Have I got that right as as well, Mr. General Manager? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, one had a minimum and one had a base rate. Yeah, so I guess with this rate harmonisation process we're going through, there might be some reconsolidation. But anyway, it, just to note that it was it, it was a good document. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, Councillor Thomas, did you have a comment? I had, yeah, two comments. So on, I'll just digress back to Councillor Longmire's 14.4. Uh, yes, I, I really think we really need to have some formal formal discussion around how we move forward in this space in regards to what the New South Wales farmers have brought to the table today. And uh, I'm really happy to have input into that as we um, move forward with that process. And then of course, 14.3, the letter from the Moela Progress Association. I was just wondering if we could have comment from our general manager, Mr. Butler, in regards to their request 
Now, this has been an ongoing request for some time now in regards to permanent staff locate, located in Mawela. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Thomas. That'll go off to our, through to our Director of Engineering and down through our Recreation Manager, Darren Harvey, to, to look at that and better understand that. It's an operational matter, but I thought coming from a community group, we'd put it through as correspondence. But yeah, that'll that'll come through our our processes. It's it's not as much about you know requesting staff just for the sake of having staff there. We'd look at it as a service based issue and whether or not there is or isn't service issues. I'm not saying there is or isn't, but yeah, it'll come it'll come to a pretty systematic sort of approach, I think. And um, but yeah, I know it's been a long held view that they they wanted that. Um, that sort of permanent base of staff down there. I think the council's done a few things in the last couple of years. It's it's showed a bit more presence there in regard to getting that depot back in our hands and and things like that. So yeah, I'll I'll talk with Steve, our director of engineering, further on that one. We haven't had a chance to to touch base fully on that, but we have we have had the comments before around that request. Just a question, please. Yes, Councillor Long. Uh, it's it's in relation. It's uh, the same situations happening in how long too with the staffing level and uh, we'd love to be considered the same same way as Moala is in, the, in that because I'm doing a lot of the work over here. In fact, this morning I had to go and solve a water issue in town um, before the, the meeting because uh, it was we've got no staff unless you they take sometimes they can take two hours to come over because they're obviously busy. And there's all sorts of issues with the tip. No one answers the phone, so you can't use the tip after hours. And and Moala's got the same issue, so needs investigating. Cheers. Thanks. Yep, yep. Uh, any further um, comments on any of their correspondence, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carry. Thank you. Okay, uh, number 15, confidential matters. How are we going for time? Um, we don't have any confidential. So. No, no confidential item. That's... So that concludes our meeting. Oh, Thank cool. you very much, councillors. At 11.40. Um,